this video will be for truckers. If you're not a trucker, you may not find any value in this video, but if you are a trucker, you may find a lot of value in this video. I have been doing a lot of thinking. There's a lot of people who are targeting you guys because you make money and you, you have this problem. If you're in the truck, you're making money. You come out the truck, you're not making money. But if you're in the truck, you're away from home. You don't have a lot of stuff going on. You don't have a lot of free time. And then I hear there's this 10 hour layover thing. This is just a plan in a theory. I don't drive a truck. I don't know what the trucker life is like. I can make some assumptions, but I'm not really sure. So I've put together some suggestions for you that's gonna seem kind of crazy for you, but it's to help you start an online business. For those of you who are here for the first time, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we get money through hustling and entrepreneurship. We make money, we protect money, we stack money, and we turn it into passive income after we made a gain of money from a business. So this is gonna be a little different today. Below, I have some products and some things for folks who need to start a business. But let me state this and maybe be very clear. If you can't afford my products, don't buy them. There are free books, there are free resources that if you hustle, you should easily be able to make 500 to 3,000 bucks a month. It's not going to be easy. Then come back later for the big boy stuff. I've been looking and there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the trucking world. You got truckers making videos, you have uh, so much going on. And there's really not a lot of people who are truckers who have other businesses that I know of. Uh, most folks who are truckers, they do trucking or they do some type of auxiliary trucking business. Here's the plan, and it's hinged upon this 10 hour layover thing because I hear that many truckers can get screwed with that, like seriously screwed. First thing you need to do is to get into physical fitness. I know you, I'm telling you this, this is something that's very different. You need to start doing a lot of cardio. Now, why is this? To start a business, you need a lot of energy. To be a trucker, you need a lot of energy. It's a different kind of energy, but you know, driving and paying attention and avoiding crazy people and having people pull out in front of you and stop when you got like 20,000 pounds in the trailer, that's taxing. That's really, really taxing. So you gotta get your energy level very, very high. So go for walks, uh, find one of these gyms that has a, tw a, a, local, a nationwide chain and dedicate an hour or more to physical fitness, but cardio, you wanna get your energy up. And after a month of doing that, you want to start looking into online businesses because this is the big conundrum. If you come out the truck, you lose your income. If you stay in the truck, you make money, but how can you do it? Amazon FBA is a hustle. Okay. Let me be really clear about that. If as long as you treat it as a hustle and not the be all, you'll be good. You guys have capital to go into Amazon FBA at a very high level. I mean, some of you guys can go in at five, 10 K right off the riff and just make it. So Amazon FBA is potentially one that you could literally run from the truck because there are services to receive your inventory. I mean, there are some Amazon FBA sellers who never ever see their inventory. They just order it. It goes to a warehouse. So, you know, do some research on that. You know, I'm giving you guidelines and hints. Um, now, the second thing you can do is create your own product. You got to put together a team. This is where you're going to need the energy. You out there on the road, uh, maintain check signing authority, but maybe you have a wife, uh, maybe you have a brother, maybe you have someone you can really trust and you begin channeling some money back home for this business. Now, here's some businesses you can get into with partners. You can easily start a car wash. You can easily start a laundromat. You can easily start cleaning service, janitorial service. See, many people who have no capital, who have no credit, they start these businesses from hand to mouth. Like they start working the business, it's not making much money. But many of you, because some of you guys make 300K a year, you could take 
50K and put it into a real business and add a little money to it each month until it grows to a certain point, but you're gonna need partners, you're gonna need a team. You can't do it yourself because you and that truck, you are the cash generator. You're generating these economic bullets. So that's another thing you can do. Now, for truckers who love trucking, there are some people who love it, what you guys need to do is scale up to four or five trucks as fast as you can. What's gonna happen in my prediction, the truckers who have low debt loads are going to win. If your truck's paid off, if your trailer's paid off, you can run lean during this recession and then scoop up all this business that these other trucking companies who are heavily debt loading, they have to service all this debt, they can't afford to drop their rates because you can become a ninja. You can go out and maybe get a few used trucks, make sure that they're DLT safe and approved and everything. Think, strate str think strategically, because uh, there's a lot of people who are talking about business credit for trucking, have a problem with that. You can go out and get business credit and you can get a truck, but it's just you. So you go out and get business credit, you get one truck. And if you don't have management skills, how are you gonna build a team of truckers? Management is a resource upon it unto itself. I mean, management can be a full-time job. If you got five, six trucks, you gotta be on the phone, they gotta eat, they got needs, things happen, trucks breaks down. Management's a full-time job for someone with five or six or more trucks. I know of someone who used to have a trucking company, well, probably still does, and they used to drop off wire next to the warehouse to where the upscale garage sale was in. And he had five trucks and he did all the local runs. He said, cause I gotta be available. I only do these local runs cause they lived in uh, Augusta. So he did local runs and sometimes his wife and she was like five foot nothing. It was just amazing to see her jump out that truck. And they handled the local stuff and then they had drivers doing the long distance stuff. And he was very successful. I mean, uh, I think dude was a millionaire. Uh, Cause you know, we were just talking, he was showing me his house he had built. And it was a mansion in Augusta. So you know, he was rolling, right? Had him a nice, pretty young wife who drove the truck. She helped in the business. So start thinking strategically how you can develop a partnership with truckers that you, um, employ or 10 of y'all need to band together and form your own authority and get each other's trucks paid off. Because like I said, the moves that I made, cause last year I saw all of these recession clouds brewing and I made a lot of moves. I cut my overhead. I didn't have debt, but I drastically reduced my overhead cause I saw what was coming and it is here. So if you guys work together, and form an authority and really help each other out, y'all can all come up together. Uh, from what I've seen, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like a lot of truckers are lone wolves and no one's really putting stuff together because if you get 10, 15, 20 independent truckers to form together and then form their authority and then they hire a dispatcher and maybe even a small warehouse, man, you can make so much more money. So. I just want to put this out here because like I said, I'm going to do a little series of stuff. I'm going to do a little bit more research, you know, wherever I'm wrong, just drop it in the comments because once again, I don't drive a truck. I'm assuming, but I do know business and I do know that a business with heavy debt loads is compromised or crippled. Maybe, you know, you need to pay off your truck where you can run lean. Um, there's so many things, but the business credit thing, unless you're going to put together a fleet of trucks, I don't really think you should be messing with that too tough. And I really don't. Because if you, you know, you got a 700, anybody can get a truck with a 700 credit score. And also during this recession, and this is why you gotta manage your debt loads, you're gonna be able to get better equipment cheaper. Because there's gonna be a lot of drivers, new drivers who are walking off, you're gonna be able to steal loads, all kinds of stuff because everybody is on this, everyone's hooked on debt and what's called leverage, right? 
So you, you have all these situations that if you are an independent operator, that you own your truck or you've got a lot or you've paid down your debt, you're going to give yourself a lot of power to weather this recession. And anyone you hire, because I was watching this, uh, this video about this dude, he bought this truck for this other guy trying to help him out and the guy screwed him. Don't do that. If you buy a truck, in your name and the person's gonna drop there an employee. Do not try to be leverage your good credit to help someone out. You need to have them as a employee on a pay, you know, you need to pay them. And maybe that truck just pays for itself and it doesn't really pay you. But once that truck's paid off, then let's say you make the same money, whatever that truck payment now comes in your pocket. You start you gotta start thinking strategically and long term like that. Because what I see is there's a, a lot of people here on YouTube who are trying to get into trucking and they don't know shit about trucking. Um, <laughs> I know a few truckers. I wouldn't do it, but I'm a homebody. And I, I mean, I don't even like traffic. I got two cars last year. I put like 7,000 miles collectively on both of them because uh, everything I, I have and I want to do movie theaters, they're all like within five or seven miles. So for me, trucking would be a nightmare, not because it's a bad business, but that being away from home, not being out of my environment, not having my stuff the way that I like it, that would be horrible for me. But if you're a young man and you haven't developed such taste, trucking could be the best thing in the world for you. You know, it just depends. Also, I want some of you guys to think about this. You have a CDL, or you form a military, you know, they need truck truck drivers on some of these contracting jobs overseas where you're going to make 150, 200 K. So that's something else you can think about. Go over there for five years, come back with, you know, 800,000 cash, or maybe, you know, do some, do not get into these nightclub businesses or juke joints. No, no, don't do that. Just stack your cash because, Many of you are maybe seasoned drivers and you're in a situation where you are probably going to be able to easily ride out this recession, but there's a lot of young and new drivers or new truck owners who really don't understand the business of trucking. Now I worked in a warehouse. I know what a pro number is. I saw how this stuff was loaded and just from the warehouse standpoint, that's a whole, let's say you, you real good with trucking you know trucking, but you start your own thing, but you really don't understand the warehousing aspect. That can put you out of business. This is why I'm saying be really careful with business credit because you can get more credit easily, but where's the cash flow that's gonna come to service that debt? So if you got any questions about the business side, once again, I don't know anything about driving a truck, but I do know uh, about the warehouse side because I had to deal with a lot of warehouse and I had to deal with LTL freight. So I know that. And, you know, collectively we can come together with some plans for you to make more money and have the life you want. Because like I have seen some crazy stuff here on YouTube and I want to be a voice of reason because you guys definitely need the five checking accounts. Uh, you guys definitely need a budget and you guys, I mean, seriously, your first year, you know, you should be on the road. Once again, if you're a young man with no family, roll out, roll hard, roll hard, roll for hard for two, three years and stack your cash and do some stuff. I'm telling you um, what's going to happen in the next three to five years is going to literally change the landscape of America. Now, the self-driving trucks, once again, I still think they're going to be ubiquitous all over America in about seven years but they're not going to be able to drive every route because they're not going to have the grid in some of these places. So they're going to still need human truck, excuse me, human truck drivers. So knowing that this is coming, you may want to start nailing down some of those routes right now before it gets so bad where everybody's trying to jump on these routes because all the city routes, all that stuff, that's already on the grid. That's that, that's what they're going to do. But anything that's difficult, challenging. Um, when I was selling antique furniture, I had to have a blanket wrap, blanket wrap services and that's a whole different game. So maybe you want to get into that, but 
You could be any and everywhere with that, right? So just some food for thought, just some game planning, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the stuff you can do. But if you're stuck in that truck, whereas if you come out that truck, you're gonna suffer a severe economic penalty. Maybe you have family, maybe you have child support where your income cannot go down. So you've got to figure out what kind of online business can you start from that truck? Also, uh, is there a special internet for truckers? Like I said, I don't know because you will be consuming a lot of internet. So you need to get that set up. Uh, you have your authority. You need to probably set up, create a separate LLC structure for your online business and grow that. So, you know, like I said, put a lot of questions down in the comments so we can have the discussion and I'll see you guys later.